Welcome back. In this episode, I will talk about Bulgaria's participation in the Great War, but to understand Bulgarian ambitions and why this country joined the Central Powers, we have to go back a few decades to the late 19th century. In 1877, Russia achieved a major victory in the war against the Ottoman Empire, reaching Constantinople, almost fulfilling the old dream of the Tsars regarding the capture of the Bosporus and the Dardanelles. In the Treaty of San Stefano, Bessarabia was annexed by Russia, the Ottomans recognized the independence of Romania, while Montenegro doubled its territory and a large Bulgarian state was created. This alarmed the other great powers, who quickly convened in Berlin and negotiated a new peace treaty that limited Russian ambitions. In the Treaty of Berlin, Austria-Hungary was allowed to occupy Bosnia-Herzegovina, while Bulgaria was greatly reduced, giving back large areas to the Ottomans. After this, Russia started to distance itself from Germany, Bulgaria felt robbed, but the other great powers were satisfied. In the following decades, the situation didn't change, the Balkans were still dominated by the Ottoman Empire, which was in decline. By 1912, these countries decided it was time to completely remove Ottoman presence. They formed the Balkan League, and together they defeated the Ottomans and signed a new peace treaty that enlarged Bulgaria, but also allowed Serbia and Greece to expand. An independent Albania was created, because Austria-Hungary wanted to prevent Serbian access to the Adriatic. Despite the huge gains, Bulgaria was not satisfied with the outcome, it wanted to annex Macedonia and Thessaloniki due to historical reasons, so it declared war on Serbia in 1913. However, its neighbors formed a new alliance and counter-attacked, reaching a stalemate. Romania then interfered, and advanced towards Sofia, the Bulgarian capital, while the Ottomans also attacked and quickly retook previously lost territories, as the Bulgarian army was overextended and could not offer any resistance. The Treaty of Bucharest once again reduced the size of Bulgaria and created the borders that look familiar even today, albeit with a few differences. Bulgaria maintained access to the Aegean Sea, but it lost Dobruja, along with a few districts that were taken by Serbia, Greece and the Ottomans. After these events, Bulgaria started to drift towards the central powers that were sympathetic, but the new Radoslavov government also contemplated an alliance with the Ottomans against Serbia and Greece. For now, no action was taken, as the economy was in ruins, a food crisis was barely avoided, and bad weather further reduced production. The newly gained territories were poor and underdeveloped, with tobacco being the only product that could provide some income. The country was undecided regarding its foreign policy, it tried to end its isolation, but the central powers were not yet ready to sign a treaty with Bulgaria, as it would have alienated both Romania and Greece. Bulgaria badly needed new loans to finance its debt and develop the newly acquired regions. Their repeated requests were rejected by the French. Russia was exerting financial pressure to remove the current government, so it would not negotiate either. But then Austrian banks provided a small loan, and Germany agreed to lend a much larger sum. Despite furious opposition in Parliament, the agreement was signed, which was a huge defeat for French and Russian diplomacy. When the war broke out in July 1914, Bulgaria remained neutral, it would not budge without great power support, but these powers were busy courting Romania, which was viewed as a much more important potential ally. Bulgaria signed a secret treaty with the Ottomans, but it still remained neutral, even when the Ottomans joined the war on the side of the Central Powers. Austrian blunders in Serbia didn't help. Bulgaria watched on the sidelines as Serbia successfully defended itself, even though it still wanted to take Macedonia, which included important historical locations like Okrid. Russia tried to mediate between the two countries, but Serbia would not cede significant territories just to ensure Bulgarian neutrality, while vague French and British offers regarding the acquisition of Ottoman lands were rejected by Prime Minister Radoslavov, who adopted a wait-and-see policy. 
When Anglo-French forces landed in the Dardanelles and Italy joined the Entente in 1915, Bulgaria became more interested in cooperation. The Entente offered southern Dobruja and parts of Serbia and Greece in return for an immediate attack against the Ottomans, but they forgot to consult the countries whose territories would be reduced, so their approach could not be deemed serious. The Central Powers, on the other hand, offered Macedonia and all the lands that were lost in 1913, but in the end it was the military situation that convinced the Bulgarian leaders. Gallipoli turned into a stalemate, while Russia was driven back on the Eastern Front. In September the agreement with the Central Powers was signed, Germany promised more territories, while Austria-Hungary extended another major loan. Bulgaria mobilized and in October it attacked Serbia, while a small Entente force landed in Saloniki, in Greece. The Bulgarian army consisted of 11 infantry and 1 cavalry divisions, its size quickly grew to 600,000 men, while the air force had a mere 5 aircraft, but it would soon receive more German planes along with their crews. The attack on Serbia commenced with 10 German and 4 Austro-Hungarian divisions, the Serbs were forced to move most of their troops to the north, so the two Bulgarian armies had an easier time. Down south, the small Bulgarian Second Army advanced to Skopje, and although it met French forces, encircling the entire Serbian army seemed possible. Nish was soon taken, Bulgarian and Austro-Hungarian forces met and formed a single line, but Serbian forces managed to retreat through Albania, and were evacuated by the Entente to the island of Corfu. By mid-December, Serbia was fully occupied, but Bulgarian forces stopped at the Greek border, even after defeating smaller French and British units. Bulgaria conquered almost all the territories it desired. Germany was now able to supply weapons and ammunition to both Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire. In January 1916, Montenegro was also occupied by Austria-Hungary, along with Albania, where a small Italian force had to retreat. In August, to prevent an attack by the Entente, Bulgarian forces crossed the border into Greece and approached Saloniki, while they also advanced in Macedonia. This was followed in 1917, with the end of the internal Greek crisis, the new government joined the Entente, and a combined force of British, French, Greek, Serbian, Italian and Russian troops continued fighting along the entire front. In the meantime, when Romania invaded Austria-Hungary in 1916, it was quickly overrun. Bulgarian troops occupied the Dobruja and the coast all the way to the Russian border. The country had by now achieved all of its main goals, but the war continued, its outcome was far from certain. After two years of stalemate, in September 1918, Entente forces broke through the Macedonian front, they overwhelmed the exhausted and starving Bulgarian troops, and their offensive could not be contained anymore. Tsar Ferdinand sued for peace, Bulgarian troops would retreat from all occupied territories, the army would be stripped of its weapons, and the country would lose some of its land. Ferdinand abdicated in favor of his son, Boris III, and Bulgaria would have to wait for the next opportunity to expand. This would be my summary on Bulgaria in World War I. I will certainly take a look at the country in the interwar period and in World War II sometime in the future. See you in the next video!